The other week I discovered something that I'd missed completely in all the weeks that I've owned the M8 and that is the process menu in the sample edit page. So if I come over to edit on this sample and here is our sample and if I just press the play button and hold it you'll hear the whole sample. I look down here and when I saw crop I thought that was the only thing you could do but of course if I hold edit and the right button you'll see we've got all these other things we can do to process the sample. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to go through this and show you what each one of these does and I can't believe I missed that I just thought this was crop so that was just silly of me wasn't it. So anyway we've got crop as our first option so let's see what that does. The crop deletes everything in grey leaving the blue area the part of the sample which is selected untouched and you can set this in the select menu so obviously at the moment the whole sample is selected. So if I come up here to select come over to the right and hold edit and down now I'm going to leave just this first part of the sample. So the first part of the sample is selected and the rest is in grey. So this is going to delete everything in the grey area. So I come down to crop and with that highlighted I press edit and it's done that. If I press play now all I've got is the beginning of the sample. Now you can undo this. So if I come over to undo and press edit it's undone. It's back to the way it was before. Obviously you would need to come over to the uh, right here and hold edit and up to reselect the whole sample and it's back as it was. So that is crop. So crop deletes everything in grey and leaves the selected area untouched. Let's look at delete now. Now delete is kind of the reverse of that. Same as the crop but it's the blue area that gets deleted. So if I again uh, come right the way back and leave that front bit selected. This time if I press the edit button it's going to delete that first part of the sample in blue and leave the rest. So if I press play see it's deleted that first bit. Let's come over to undo and we're back to what we had before and again I'm just going to come up and bring the whole sample back, select the whole sample. So it's crop and delete. Now the next item on the menu is duplicate. Now if I do this, this effectively copies the entire sample into the timeline of the sample. Depending on how accurately the loop has been made in the first place, you might get a seamless double loop. This can be done multiple times but undone only once. So the whole sample is selected. I've got duplicate highlighted so if I press edit now what happens is this you will see that the sample has doubled in length and that new bit is in grey so if I come up to the right hand set of numbers and select the whole thing so I'm going to press play and now sample has doubled in length. So if I come down to duplicate again and press edit now it's doubled again. So I've doubled it and doubled it again. This can be done multiple times but undone only once. If I come down to undo, now it's gone down to the double but if I press undo again you see it only goes back one stage. If I don't want to commit to that I hold shift and left and exit without saving. OK, come back to the edit page and I've got my original four bar loop. So that is duplicate. Pretty cool. Right let's come down to our next item in the process menu which is going to be normalize. Now you may not see anything on this because what this does 
is it brings up the volume of the selected part of the sample to its maximum level without clipping. This can be undone. So if I just select a little bit of the sample, like I said, I'm not sure it's going to work on this, but we'll give it a go. Um, something we can actually see. Uh, come down to normalize, press edit. See, it's not done anything because I think it's already normalized. This will only work with a sample that's that's pretty quiet. But you get the idea is that it's the, it's the normal thing, excuse the pun, it just brings the volume up. So if you've got a bit of a quiet sample, this will bring the level up, but it won't take it into clipping, into distortion, if you like. So that is normalized and you can undo it. So let's uh, get a whole sample back. Next item on the menu is silence and this simply gives you a period of silence for the, the part of the sample that is highlighted. So we'll bring the sample back to our favorite area and we'll come down to the silence menu, press edit. And now you'll see that first part of the sample is silent. There's just a flat line there. If I come up and reselect everything, you'll be able to see where the sample kicks in. That first period of silence, and then we're in. And can we undo this? I think we can. Yep, we can. So if you want a little gap in your sample, that's what you do. Next item on the menu is fade in. And this is pretty obvious. What it's gonna do is fade in the first part of the selection. So that's fade in and fade out is fairly obvious. If we press the edit button, now you can see how the sample starts normally and then gradually fades out. Which is pretty cool, isn't it? So I've undone that. Now the next one is a little bit strange now. Cross fade loop. I was trying this out with this loop and it doesn't work with drum loops. It works a lot better with pads. So let's go to a track that's got a pad on it. All right, so track five, if I go into this, uh, Go into this instrument, go to the edit page, and if I press play, I've got this fairly mechanical, long pad sort of sound. Now, the bit that I want to do this crossfade on is fairly obvious. I'm just going to select that, so I'm going to come up and I'm going to select start round about here do and then the end I'm going to make I don't know it doesn't really matter too much to show you this bit so that's the bit that's selected in blue so we come down here and go to crossfade loop now if I press edit like I say this is for pads you make a selection and then when you press edit the M8 makes two slice points and the section in between the two slice points will loop seamlessly. The sections to the left and right of the loop are for the M8 to create a fade in and a fade out respectively. So if I press and hold play, and you hear that bit in between the two lines, just loops perfectly. So it takes information from before and after to create the fade in and fade out so that you get this lovely seamless loop. Maybe this is a bit of a strange example, but it definitely works really well. That's a cross fade loop. Moving on, we're gonna to go to mono mix now. I know for a fact that this is a stereo sample, but you can only see one waveform there. But what mono mix does, it turns this stereo sample into mono. So if I come down to the process menu, go to Mono mix and press edit, and that has changed. You can see, and um, you know, you won't probably hear any difference really, but that is now mono, so the same thing is coming out of both the left and the right speakers. And let's undo that, and it's gone back to what it was. So it makes a stereo sample mono. The next item on the menu is mono left, and this strips away the right channel to create a mono sample which comes out of both speakers. Oh, that's definitely different, isn't it? Really thinned it out. So we've stripped away the right-hand side, the right channel, and we've got a mono sample, which is coming out of both speakers. The next item in the menu is the same thing, but with the right channel. 
but we need to come back to that and press undo let's go back to the menu and we'll go to mono right so same as the previous one but it strips away the left channel okay so it could be useful you never know let's come back to our previous uh, sample and we'll go to the next item on the menu which is down sample so what does down sample do well it halves the current sample rate you can keep doing this but only undo the last lot of down sampling this effectively destroys the sample but it doesn't really because you can go back to the instrument page without saving so let's see what happens let's just press edit press play don't really hear much first time let's do it again ah, and here it's really dropped down really making it sound sort of thin and crunchy it's quite a nice effect isn't it let's go down again so press edit again getting really nasty now keep going and again now if you go to undo all it does is toggle between the last one and the one you've just done so it is destructive but you can get out of it hold shift and left exit without saving yes come back to the edit page and you've got your previous sample untouched by the downsampling process. So it's quite good for getting nice sort of thin crunchy effects. Next on the menu is bit reduction. This reduces the bit rate of the sample. The first time the bit rate is reduced to 16 and the second time it drops to 8 bit. Right, so this sample is 16 bit. So if I press edit with the process set like this, it drops it to 8 bit. Again, this reduces the quality and gives you that sort of lo-fi sound. What's next on the menu? Slice auto. Right, we need to go back to a different sample to show you this. You can hold edit and up and down to jump in large amounts. It takes you to slice 003, which is a bit down the road. So come back a bit from this. Slice auto. So what is this going to do? It automatically makes slices according to the transients in the sample. If you're not sure what transients are, they are these short bursts of sound the beginning here and here I hope you can see my cursor here here so transients are the short bursts of energy you hear in a sample like i don't know like the initial crack of a snare drum being hit this kind of slicing works better with drum loops that obviously have lots of transients undo doesn't work but of course you can always go back to the instrument page without saving to uh, get back to what you had so if i press edit with this selected now you can see I've got all these lovely slices and it's picked all the transients. If I come up to the slice marker, hold edit and then I press play, there's slice marker 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and you'll see every time I jump to a new slice it's on a transient. And this is obviously very convenient. This is a great way to slice up your drum loop if you want to reorder the slices like I've done in previous videos now so come over to the instrument page I didn't ask me to uh, save did it does it does that I think it might be a bug I go back see and I've lost all those uh, slices so do it again there we are now if I come to shift and left and this time it has asked me to exit without saving changes that's interesting so that's a really good way of slicing your long loop up i'm going to pull up another sample to show you the next item in the process menu which is slice silence now this appears to be a continuous loop but there is one tiny bit of silence in it so if i come down to the process menu and go to slice silence and press edit now it's made one slice there can you see that so if i press and hold play we're getting it. it's a long sample it's coming up there just a tiny amount of silence that it picked out i tried this on that previous drum loop and it had the same effect as slice auto so I'm not too sure, but anyway, it looks for periods of silence and puts a slice in. That is slice silence. Now we're at the end of our menu here, and from that point onwards, 
it's slice 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04. So what this does, it divides the sample into equal parts. If I press edit now, it's divided the sample into two equal parts. That slice marker may not be on a transient. It probably is here because it's halfway through. You can do this from two all the way up to, I think it's 128. Yeah, 128 slices. I won't do 128. What I'll do is I'll do 16. So let go of the edit button, press it again. And now I've got 16 slices, but you can see lots of them are right in the middle of a piece of music. If I go to the slice marker and just go through them, that one obviously is fine because it's right at the beginning. Slice marker 0, 0 is the beginning of the sample. Let's come up to one. That's in the middle of some music. Two, that's on a transient. Three, and that's right in the middle. So it's not a particularly useful way of doing it. All you're doing is dividing the sample over and over again, depending on how many slices you do. But it might be a good way to do it. You'll just have to experiment with it. So there we are. That is the process menu. I'll just show you the page again. Down here, and like I say, for weeks and weeks, I just looked at that word crop and thought that was all I could do here. But of course, you have all these lovely things you can do to mess around with your sample. And uh, it's fantastic. So you may have known this already. And if you did, well, well done. But I didn't. But so I thought there might be some other people like me out there who hadn't spotted this. And uh, perhaps you found that interesting and useful. Thank you very much for watching. And you'll see me in my next video.